from the board. I didn't even think about cranium table. I don't know why. Same. Haven't we talked about creating new representations all year long? I don't know why. Straight up. If you ever look and you're like, man, I have no clue what to do here, make another representation. Because it makes it way easier to see what's happening. I'll be trippy when I ain't in the classroom. My brain be gone. I'm trying to help you fix that so that that doesn't happen in the future. I will agree y'all don't like that very much, but... We're going to get you there by the end of the year. <coughs> Notice you could have done the same with the blue sequence. Most people don't struggle with a linear nearly as much as we do with an exponential. Okay. Uh, by the way, RJ, I'll give you a little over 25 minutes, uh, but that's all I gave them yesterday just because we'll be talking and it might get a little distracting. But let me know if you have any questions. You can, I can use Desmos? Yes, you may use Desmos. Some students had some really good reasoning yesterday about those correct answers, especially Trey. That was really well done on uh, number five. Man, everybody <laughs> classroom code. <laughs> All right, what questions do you have off of the homework up on the board? Also, Brooklyn, you see your homework can go on and you see your homework out on yeah, here. Oh, you see it. Gotcha. The other sheet, do you have that? Yeah. and you definitely need to copy that down. Do you have on this homework or these two questions because as I've said, told you before the whole point is that for us to build up to the homework that's on Friday night reviewing the skills that we have learned before and so on Friday or over the weekend one of the things I'm going to ask you to do is create recursive equations so no questions about these recursives person get one part right, it's a little shocking to me that not a single person has a question. So Dewan, you think you could write a recursive equation perfectly this weekend? Mm -hmm. Then why aren't you asking a question? I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to do it. <coughs> All right then, tell me, tell me what this means right here. What is this statement? What does this mean? I know two is the rate of change, I think. Wait, you, you know or you think? I think. And then, the one at the bottom, this is the starting point. And at the end, Good start. Anybody? Can anybody uh, add on to what the one was just saying? What this says? L stands for plus. So the function of n, yeah. Um, uh, the two's uh, root 
the time strip is the same thing like the table you see. Uh, you have <coughs> you have that three times two, which is six, and you have six times two, which is twelve. Oh, no. So there's a what kind of rate of change? The multiplicative rate. Multiplicative, right? It is an exponential function. Is a multiplicative rate of change. Yeah. Multiplying by two. And um, I have a question for the blue sequence. Yeah. Um, how do you know it's it's gonna be the negative two over three? That's the, uh, the minus two. I got that's the uh, I got plus two. That's the slope. Yeah, we know that. The blue slope. notice is a linear, so it's an absolute rate of change to slope. So notice how I'm going down to, mm -hmm. so it's negative. Yeah. But then I'm going to the right right, right three, so it is positive. Now. That's just the way I chose to do it. You can pick any two points on here. In fact, I could have gone from this point up and to the left, and it would have give, still given me the same slope. Now I'm going up one, two, three, four, five, six, and because I'm going up, it is positive. And then because I'm going to the left, it is minus negative. negative. Right. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Divide both of those by three, still get negative two thirds. Right? Now again, this is where you can make a table. Notice how it's going down two in the y's? Uh -huh. But that is just my rise. If I'm talking about slope, I also need a Does that answer your question, Tony? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I would like something that um, Trey said at the beginning, and I do want you all to remember this. Yes, I gave you a graph. Yes, I was asking for a recursive equation. But did anyone ever say you couldn't make a table or something else to help you out here? Nope. Nope. I mean, heck, if you were actually taking this seriously and really wanted to put in the time, could you have gone to Desmos and typed out an equation to see if it gave you the same exact points? Yeah. OK. These are things to think about. Um, do not forget, because I am seeing a nasty habit from a lot of students where we forget to do a starting point. Anytime you have a recursive equation, you need the rate of change, but you also need to know where the function <coughs> is starting. That's what we have going on there. But when we do that, uh, we can do any point in the graph, right? Yeah, can be any point in the graph. Yep, it can be any point. Typically, I, I start with my y-intercept because it's easier, but I will point out, you don't have the y-intercept for the blue one. Yeah. All right, any more questions off the review? Done twice. All right, 8, 9, 10 was F, G, and C. Any questions about 8, 9, 10? typed in that equation to see what it gave me. It gives me this graph. You can also use process of elimination pretty heavily. Right? Yeah, Number nine. nine. Huh? That's what I do with nine. Right. Well, nine actually should have helped you eliminate others and get to this because notice how it's paying 7% <coughs> interest compounded annually. Well, whenever we're dealing percents, you always want to think about starting at what percent? You have everything that's going on, what percent do you have? So you always want to think about 100%. And then you're either increasing or decreasing from that. If you're paying 3% or it's paying you 3%, you're increasing by 3%. Which means every year, 
you have 103% of whatever, right? But if you're dealing with a percent of, what operation is that? That's multiplication. We want to recognize that when we're dealing with a percent of, we're going to repeatedly multiply. Well, I'm starting with $7,000. And I'm repeatedly multiplying by 1.03, because 103%, and we're doing that for 20 years. Remember, an exponent is what shows repeated multiplication. All right. There are no more questions. All right. So we're going to continue 6.6. .6. How does it grow? Uh, today is our final day of this. Um, I'm going to collect at the end to give you some more feedback tonight, but that does mean you want to be moving quickly and efficiently today so that you can see as many questions as possible and get some more practice in, and so I can give you more feedback. Um, I'll collect it so I can give you feedback. We will go over some key questions tomorrow, but it will be based on what I see you all struggle with the most or what ideas we need to talk about the most to prepare for the test, and that'll take about the first half of tomorrow's class. Um, the one thing I want to say is this, it, in that regards, do not sit there and wait for me on any question. Unless you're on number 14, the very last question, you can skip something and come back to it. So if I'm working with a different group, don't wait for me to come over. Someone wasted 10 minutes earlier waiting for me to come over and answer one question. Move on and come back. All right. So don't forget we want to construct viable arguments and critique the reasoning of others, and we've been talking about this pretty heavily. In order to have a valid argument or viable argument, what two things do you need? Justification. Justification for whatever you are claiming. claiming, right? You need a claim, you need a uh, position statement, and then you need to justify that position statement with some evidence, right? Pay attention to others' arguments and critique their reasoning. That's help us practice translating functions into mathematical representations that are not given and differentiate linear, exponential, and quadratic functions. I believe, I think everyone in here was about number eight or number nine. Does that sound right? Okay, so we need to work a little bit more quickly. Nine has tripped people up. I'll be more than happy to go ahead and answer some questions about number nine. If you get to number 10, you will need me to come over and clarify, clarify a few things just because of how it's worded. So give me a shout when you get to number 12. Not literally a shout, because that'd be obnoxious inside. All right, we all clear on what we're trying to do? Let's get to work. All right. You need to work a little more quickly. We only got about 10 more minutes left. Oh, 15 minutes left. In class? No, for him to work on his understanding check. Did you say you wish, Tony? Yeah. He, oh, he wished if there was only 15 minutes left. I'll end you. Tony. I huh? I'll end you. Trying to Why talk me? about how. Tony, or uh, how Trey wants to get outside of my class.